This lecture is part of Berkeley Math 115, an introductory undergraduate course on number theory, and will be about the question of um, which primes can be represented by various quadratic forms of the form ax squared plus bxy plus c y squared. For example, we might ask which forms are sums of two squares, or which forms can be written as a square plus two times another square, or maybe a square plus three times another square. Um, so um, in, before doing this, let's recall um, some previous results we had. First of all, number n is primitively represented by some form ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared with discriminant d um, um, with discriminant d um, is equivalent to saying that that um, d is a square mod 4n. Um, so primitive means x and y are co-prime, of course. Um, and we also saw that any form is equivalent to a reduced form which satisfies b has absolute value less than or equal to a is less than or equal to c. And here we're going to take all forms to be positive definite. Um, so the negative definite case is much the same as the positive definite case because you just change sign. The indefinite case is somewhat more complicated and we'll, we'll be discussing it a little bit more in a later lecture. And now the idea is as follows. Um, suppose um, that there's a, um, a unique reduced form for some discriminant d, then um, a number n is represented by that reduced form if and only if this condition is satisfied, because if this condition is satisfied, n is represented by some form, but, but any form is equivalent to a reduced one which represents the same numbers. So now what we're going to do is to go through the various possible discriminants well, the discriminant has to be 0 or 1 mod 4. And since the form is positive definite, it must be negative. So let's look at the negative numbers that are th three, 1 or 0 mod 4. So we get these numbers here. That should be 12. That's minus 15. And this lecture, we're going to look at um, the first six of these and see what the corresponding reduced forms are. So after, after minus 12, things start getting a bit more complicated, as we will see later. So let's do the easy cases first. Let, first, let's try discriminant minus 3. Let's find all reduced forms of the form ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared with d equals b squared minus 4ac equals minus 3. You remember reduced means that b is less than or equal to a, is less than or equal to c, and it has the consequence um, that 3a squared is less than or equal to d, as we saw earlier. Well, this is now minus 3, and if 3a squared is less than or equal to d, um, we can't have a equals 0, so um, we get a equals plus 1. It can't be minus 1 because we're just working with positive definite forms. And now if we look at this, we see b squared must be odd. So b must be odd. And b is absolute value at most 1, so we find b equals plus or minus 1. So this gives us two possibilities, x squared plus xy plus y squared, or x squared minus xy plus y squared. Um, but we can really change one to the other just by swapping x with um, say minus y. So these forms are equivalent. Um, people sometimes add a little extra condition to the condition of being reduced, where you sometimes say that if, if b equals a or a equals c, then b is greater than or equal to zero. And if, if you add this condition to the form being reduced, then this already eliminates that form, so you don't have to waste time showing they are equivalent. But the trouble is this condition is a little bit fussy and difficult to remember, so 
um, anyway so what we what, so we've seen that any positive definite form with d equals minus 3 is equivalent to x squared plus xy plus y squared um, so n is represented by x squared plus xy plus y squared primitively if and only if d equals minus 3 is a square mod n because if this condition holds then n is represented by some form of discriminant minus 3 and they're all equivalent so they all represent the same numbers um, so um, let's look at this in a bit more detail let's take n to be a prime because this makes it a little bit easier to figure out um, which primes that uh, work then we see that p is of the form x squared plus xy plus y squared if and only if minus 3 is a square modulo our prime p and we worked out earlier when minus 3 is a square modulo a prime using the quadratic reciprocity law and we saw this is equivalent to saying p is congruent to 0 or 1 mod 3. So um, this tells us which primes uh, can be written in this form. For instance, let's take a look at a few examples. So if, if p is 3 or 7 or 13, we get this is equal to 1 squared plus 1 times 1 plus 1 squared. This is equal to 2 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 1 squared. This is 3 squared plus 3 times 1 plus 1 squared. Um, I suppose I ought to do 1 where, where y isn't 1. Um, um, if we have 19, this is equal to 3 squared plus 3 times 2 plus um, 2 squared. Um, and so on. Um, in fact, we can do a bit better than this. Um, because if p is equal to x squared plus xy plus y squared, well, suppose x is even. Um, then we can write p is equal to 4x over 2 squared plus 2x over 2y plus y squared, which is equal to 3x um, over 2 squared plus x over 2 plus y all squared. So p can be written in the form 3x squared plus y squared. Well, what if x isn't even? So y even, we can do the same, obviously, except we change x and y. If x and y are both odd, then we notice that this form x squared plus xy plus y squared can be written as x plus y squared plus x plus y times minus y plus minus y all squared. And now we've again written it in this form, but now x plus y is even. So um, no matter what x and y are, if p can be written in this form, then it can be written in the form x squared plus 3y squared. So we have the following theorem. So um, p prime is of the form x squared plus 3y squared if and only if p is congruent to 0 or 1 mod 3. And again, we can just check a few cases. 3 is equal to 3 times 1 squared. 7 is equal to 3 times 1 squared plus 2 squared. 13 is equal to 3 times 2 squared plus 1 squared. Um, 19 is equal to um, 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 what's 19 equal to? It's, um, let's see, the 4 squared plus 3 times 1 squared, and so on. So that's done the case d equals 3. It's, it's told us exactly which primes can be written as a square plus 3 times another square. So now let's look at discriminant minus 4. So we want to find reduced forms of discriminant minus 4. So we have ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared and we have d equals b squared minus 4ac equals minus 4. It's reduced so b is less than or equal to a is less than or equal to c and we remember this implies that 3a squared is less than or equal to d which is equal to 4 and as before this implies that a is equal to plus 1 because the form is positive definite. 
And now this condition here implies B is even. And if B is even and has absolute value less than A, this implies that B must be zero. And this determines C. So the only form is X squared plus Y squared. So this is the only reduced form of discriminant minus four that's positive definite. Um, notice there's another there's actually another reduced form of discriminant minus four which is minus x squared minus y squared but that's not positive definite so um, n is represented by i should say n greater than or equal to naught is represented by x squared plus y squared with x y co prime if and only if minus four is a square mod 4n. So we have this condition that says n is represented by some form of discriminant d, um, if and only if this condition is satisfied. If, if n is negative, we obviously have to use the form minus x squared minus y squared. But if n is positive, then the only one that can represent it is this one. Anyway, um, um, now let's take n to be prime, just to make, because th th then we can work out what this condition is. Well, this says minus 4 is a square mod um, p, or 4p, but it's obviously a square modulo 4. And we worked out when minus 1 is a square modulo p. This is just equivalent to p being congruent to 1 or 2 mod 4. So we've now managed to get this theorem due to Fermat, which says that p prime is of the form um, x squared plus y squared if and only if p is congruent to 1 or 2 mod 4. And again, we can check 2 is equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared, 5 is equal to 2 squared plus 1 squared, um, 17 is equal to 4 squared plus 1 squared, 29 is equal to 5 squared plus 2 squared, and so on. Um, so um, um, notice, by the way, that if, if n is 1 mod 4, this does not imply that n is a sum of two squares. So, so we can have 21 cannot be written as x squared plus y squared. So this really does um, require p to be a prime. Um, now let's look at d discriminant minus 7. So um, as before, we, we've got the form ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared, and we want b squared minus 4ac equals minus 7. We have b less than or equal to a less than or equal to c, and we have 3a squared less than or equal to the absolute value of d, which is minus 7. And as before, this condition here implies a equals 1, and now this condition implies b is odd, and b is absolute value at most a, so b is equal to plus or minus 1. So we get two forms, x squared plus xy plus 2y squared, and we get x squared minus xy plus 2y squared. And as before, um, we can get from one to the other just by changing x to minus x, or by saying b must be positive, so we can cross this one out, it doesn't give us anything new. So this, so, so any form um, with d equals minus 7 that's positive definite is equivalent to this. Um, and of course, there's another one of discriminant minus 7 where we just change all the signs. So if n is greater than or equal to 0, then n is equal to x squared plus xy plus 2y squared with xy co prime if and only if minus 7 is a square mod 4n. So just as with minus 3, let's try and figure out when this happens. Um, so when is minus 7 a square mod 4n? Well, let's take n to be a prime. Um, so we want minus 7 is a square mod p. Um, so it'd be a square modulo and odd prime. So this is equivalent to saying minus 7p is equal to plus 1 or 0, I guess, for the case p equals 7, which is kind of trivial. And by quadratic reciprocity, 
this um, is the same as saying p7 is equal to plus 1, which is equivalent to p being 1, 2, or 4 mod 7. So the primes of the form x squared plus xy plus 2y squared are exactly those um, of the form p congruent to 0, 1, 2, or 4 mod 7. And we can check a few cases. For example, 7 is equal to 1 squared plus 1 times minus 2 plus minus 2 squared. It's a bit hard to spot this because they need to take that number to be negative. Um, um, and similarly, 11 is equal to 1 squared um, um, so 11 is equal to, let me see if we take y equals 2, 4, 8. Yeah, we can take 1 squared plus 1 times 2 plus um, 2 times 2 squared. So there should be a factor of 2 in there. And um, the next ones are 23 and 29. And I'll leave this as an exercise because it's very confusing doing this in your head. Um, well, um, the form x squared plus xy plus 2y squared looks a little bit messy, but we can actually make it a little bit better. You notice that if p is equal to x squared plus xy plus 2y squared with p um, odd, then this implies y must be even. Because if y is odd, this bit is even and this bit is even, so p would have to be 2. Um, so, um, we can now write this as x plus y over 2 squared plus 7y over 2 squared. So if p is not equal to 2, then actually p can be written as a sum of a, a square plus 7 times another square. So the primes that are a 7 plus 7 times another square are the ones with p congruent to 0, 1, 2, 4, mod 7, except for p um, being 2, which is which doesn't quite work. So, for instance, we can write 7 is equal to 0 squared plus 7 times 1 squared. Um, the next one was um, 11 is equal to 2 squared plus 7 times 1 squared. Um, 23 is equal to um, 4 squared plus 7 times 1 squared, and so on. Um, so um, we've dealt with um, the forms x squared plus y squared, x squared plus 3y squared, x squared plus 7y squared. Um, the next one is x squared plus 2y squared, where we take d equals minus 8. So let's try and find the reduced forms. We have ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared, and um, d is equal to b squared minus 4ac is now minus 8. And as before, we see that 3a squared is less than or equal to minus d. And plus d. And um, this is 8. So again, this implies a is equal to plus 1 if the form is positive definite. Um, obviously, things are going to get a bit more complicated when the discriminant d gets larger because we will no longer be able to assume that a is equal to 1. And as before, this gives b to be even, and b must be less than or equal to a in absolute value, so b is equal to 0, and the only positive definite form with d equals minus 8 is x squared plus 2y squared. So we've now, now got the form x squared plus 2y squared. And um, n is of the form x squared plus 2y squared if and only if minus 8 is a square mod 4n. That's for x, y equals 1, of course. And if n is equal to p a prime, what we want is that minus 8 is a square mod p. And we saw when this works earlier, this is just saying that minus 2p is equal to plus 1, and we found this is equivalent to p congruent to 1 or 3 mod 8. So the primes of the form x squared plus 2y squared are exactly those of the form 1 or 3 mod 8. And we can write out a few examples. 3 is equal to 
um, 1 squared plus 2 times 1 squared. Um, the next one is 11, which is equal to... Um, um, let me see. I think you'd have to take x equals 3. So that's 3 squared plus 2 times 1 squared. Um, the next one is going to be 17, which should be some a square plus 2 times another square. And we can see that's actually equal to 3 squared plus 2 times 2 squared, and so on. Um, so now let's go on to d equals um, minus 11. And um, again, if we look at the reduced forms, um, we have, um, as before, we have 3a squared is less than or equal to the absolute value of d. And this still involves a being less than or equal to 1. So we can take a equals plus 1. And, and as before, um, b squared minus 4ac is equal to minus 11. So b is odd. So b is equal to plus or minus 1, and we get two forms, x squared plus xy plus 3y squared, x squared minus xy plus 3y squared. And as before, we can eliminate this one just by changing x to minus x or something like that. So um, any positive definite form with d equals minus 11 is equivalent to this one. So as before, we find P prime being is of the form x squared plus xy plus 3y squared um, is equivalent to um, minus 11 being a square modulo um, 4P. And by using quadratic reciprocity, this says minus 11P is equal to plus 1, which by quadratic reciprocity turns out to be the same as p being a quadratic residue of 11, or 0, um, which means that p um, has to be congruent to um, 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, which is um, 5, or 25, which is 3, modulo 11. So these are the primes that can be represented as x squared plus xy plus 3y squared. And you can write out a few examples as you want. Now, um, in the case p equals 7, we could convert the form x squared plus xy plus 2y squared to x squared plus 7y squared by assuming that y must be even. Um, that doesn't quite work here because y doesn't have to be even. Um, I mean, the, the, the problem is this coefficient here is now odd rather than even. So, so um, it's not so easy to um, discuss forms of the, the, the form x squared plus 11y squared. Um, now let's finish off by doing d equals 12 when we get an extra complication. So d equals minus 12. So um, we're looking at... Um, ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared with b squared minus 4ac equals minus 12, and it's reduced. So b is at most a, which is at most c. And as usual, we get 3a squared is less than or equal to the absolute value of d. And now we have a bit of a problem because this now implies a is equal to 1 or 2. Um, because this is now 12. So we're finally getting something a little bit more um, interesting than a always being 1. So let's first of all look at a equals 1. Well, um, here we notice that b is even. So if a is 1, b must be equal to 0. And c must be equal to 3. So we get the form x squared plus 3y squared. But we've got another one. We can have a is equal to 2. Um, and um, um, we can now take... Um, um, b has to be even. And um, so we get b is equal to minus 2, 0, or 2. And um, if we look at these three cases, um, we get... 2x squared minus 2xy plus 2y squared from b equals minus 2. Here we get 2x squared, um, um, and then we want 
4ac is equal to minus 12, so this case doesn't work. And then we get 2x squared plus 2xy plus 2y squared. And as before, we can change x to minus x, so um, we can forget about this one. So we see we actually get two um, non-equivalent forms. So any positive definite form with d equals minus 12 is equivalent to one of these. And we notice that these two forms are not equivalent. In fact, we mentioned this in an earlier lecture because this one is always even for no matter what x and y are, and this one is sometimes odd. Um, so, um, if we've got a number, all we can do is to say it's represented by... Um, so, n is represented by at least one of um, x squared plus 3y squared, um, 2x squared plus 2xy plus 2y squared, um, if and only if, um, so it's, it's represented primitively, so x and y must be co-prime, if and only if um, minus 12, which is equal to d, is a square, Modulo, um, modulo 4n. Well, so how do we separate out these two cases? Well, we notice that this one is always even. So if n is odd and minus 12 is a square mod 4n, this implies that n is of the form x squared plus 3y squared. So in particular, um, the primes of the form x squared plus 3y squared are exactly the ones such that minus 12 is a square modulo 4n. And we actually did this earlier for discriminant minus 3. So if n is prime, this is equivalent to p being congruent to 0 or 1 modulo 3. Um, well, um, so... so Almost all the forms we've done so far, except for the form 12, had the property that there was only one um, equivalence class of forms. And for 12, there are two equivalence class of forms, but one of them is irrelevant for odd numbers because it always takes even numbers. Um, when we go beyond discriminant minus 12, things get even more complicated because we, we start getting several different um, equivalence classes of forms and it begins to get more and more complicated to tell which numbers um, they represent. So we'll be doing some examples of this um, in the next lecture.